I believe that naturalism is true. Apparently, however, there's a young man in America who owns a computer who thinks my position is self-defeating. He goes by the name of Inspirational Philosophy and he makes the following claim. If you believe naturalism is true, then you cannot trust what your mind has told you is true. So you cannot operate as if anything you believe is factual. But if you do believe that your mind is telling you what is true about reality, then you are also saying that naturalism is false. So, according to IP, there's no way I can believe in naturalism whilst also trusting that my beliefs are true. My belief in naturalism is, on his reckoning, self-defeating. He provides the following reasoning to support this claim. So if naturalism is true, and we are products of natural selection, then everything we know is only for survival, and not what is actually real. What he means is that if naturalism is true, and if our cognitive faculties are merely products of biological evolution, then it's unlikely that what we claim to know is really true, rather than being some inaccurate notion cobbled together by thinking that just happened to help our ancestors survive, and that this includes any claim that naturalism is true. The problem with this argument is that it tries to smuggle in highly controversial claims about truth and knowledge as if they're the most uncontroversial and innocent of axioms, namely that truth is reality and that knowledge is the correspondence of belief to that reality. Now this is probably just the triumph of inspiration over philosophy, as I suspect IP doesn't bother reading much actual philosophy beyond that he hopes will support his faith, or that he thinks philosophy is about proving a point rather than developing one. Nevertheless, for the genuine philosopher, IP's argument, as presented, is dishonest because there are many of us who reason that truth is not identical to reality and that there's more to knowledge than the correspondence of beliefs to reality. I, for instance, argue that the bearers and the makers of truth are distinct, the former being semantic, the latter procedural. I also argue for a pragmatic foundierantism with regards to knowledge. These are plausible philosophical positions, which eviscerate IP's argument, but with which he fails to engage. I thereby remain at liberty to believe that godless nature is adequate for truth, despite the best efforts of earnest young believers who own computers. Thank you for listening.